for Real Estate Reality Check. Let's bring in our A-list panel to kick it off. Redfin, Chief Economist Daryl Fairweather, Reventure Consulting CEO Nick Jurley, and Crescent Capital Chief Investment Officer Jack Ablin. Jack, I'm going to start with you. You actually just randomly, we had already planned to do this. I get this note from you. We asked you to come on not that long ago. Thanks very much. Using your math and using rates and whatever, you think that the median price of a home should be over $100,000 less than it is right now. Yes, and it's a pretty simple math, Brian. All we're doing is we're taking median incomes, which we're calculating uh, at 77000 roughly uh, per year. And again, that's been going up over the last couple of years, so we want to take that into consideration. We're um, calculating a mortgage rate of about 7.5%, uh, and then we assume that 25% of the income goes to a, a, a monthly mortgage payment. We kind of gross that up and then add another 20% for a down payment. We come up with $283,000. That's substantially below the 400 400 plus thousand that you're showing on, on the screen. So um, I don't expect we're going to see an immediate 31% crash. Wow. Uh, because like you said, those that are existing homeowners who have low mortgage rates are just going to stay put. Yeah, and Daryl, I want to be clear, the median home price has come down off its peak of a couple of months ago. I think it was around 430 or 440. So the trend is down. You know, I want you to comment on what Jack just said, but also here's what's bonkers. It doesn't seem to matter. If you put a decent house for sale on the market, I talk to a lot of realtors. They sell in like three days. Yeah, I think what should be the right price is very different from what actually is the price right now. We have a real lack of supply, a lack of supply that has been going on for at least five years. But during the pandemic, it became extremely acute because people snatched up all the homes and now they don't want to sell anymore. About a third of homes for sale right now are new construction because there are so few existing homes on the market. And since new construction is doing a quite well right now, at least you know amidst these high rates, we can be, I can hope that there will be more inventory down the line. But for the time being, those prices are probably going to stay put high. Homeowners don't have a real reason to sell. No. And, and in fact, they, ha they not only not have a reason to sell, Nick, they've got an active reason not to sell, which is, yeah, maybe I'm sitting on a bunch of equity. I'll make a fortune. But unless I'm moving to, like, Equatorial Guinea, I'm going to have to buy a house somewhere else. And I'm going to end up paying 7%. Do you see a crash coming? And, you know, that's a great point, Brian. A lot of people are locked in. However, here's the thing. There's 100 million single-family homes in America. The inventory on the market's less than a million. So all we need, actually, in America to see inventory increase substantially is a little bit of distress in the housing market. And one area I'm seeing that distress right now is with investors. Lots of investors who bought during the pandemic, whether they be for long-term rentals or Airbnbs, their properties are sitting vacant right now, and the rent is going down as their cost of debt is going up. So a lot of these investors, like the homeowners, have said to themselves, oh, I don't need to sell just yet. But there's pressure building in the background of the housing market that I think will cause yeah. inventory to go up by quite a bit. Nick, can, can, I want to go I'm going to go back to you, Nick, because you're making a good point. And I've been reading a lot about these Airbnbs that are now kind of being distressed sales. Can you explain a little bit more to the audience? Why would Airbnb homeowners be particularly you know, people who buy specifically to rent it out, they're never going to live there. Why are they being hurt more now? It's a great question. It's, it's all a cash flow situation and a supply situation. So the aggregate Airbnb demand in America is actually still pretty strong. The problem is the supply of Airbnbs, specifically in certain markets like Phoenix and Austin and Tampa, has surged out of control way more than the demand which is now causing the revenues to go down substantially, particularly for mom and pop Airbnb owners who don't have access to all the fancy pricing tools that the big guys do. And so mm -hmm. I'm talking to Airbnb owners around America. They're saying their uh, listing is doing 40 percent less revenue this year compared to last year. And again, there's a million and a half Airbnbs in America. Uh, some of them are doing fine. But others are really, yeah. really struggling, and that's going to put pressure on them to sell as, they, uh, as their revenue Jack, declines Jack, to, to your 